So Chair Miller and board members, um, we have Caleb Dardick, who's on the line. I would invite him to come on screen, as, as well as Steve Frisch, um, CEO, Executive Director of the Sierra Business Council, who will be presenting this item today. Thank you. Okay, Caleb, you're up. All right. Thank you. Thank you, board members. And Allison, I do believe Martin is going first and that Jeffrey is going to tee up a presentation for us. You know, we're just, we're just here. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Chair Miller, members of the board, this is Martin Polk, your Chief Fiscal Officer here. And we're going to present to you today a preliminary American Rescue Plan expenditure plan. So uh, the American Rescue Plan uh, local funding is what we're talking about today, approximately $19.3 million. I'll kick this off and then Caleb and his team are going to uh, wrap it up and we'll have plenty of, of uh, time for questions and comments afterwards. You can interrupt me if you'd like, but we definitely have plenty of time afterwards. So we've taken several steps in this preliminary expenditure plan process. Uh, we've outreached the county departments to identify priority needs for these American Rescue Plan dollars. We've reviewed the ARP expenditure plan with the budget subcommittee during these last couple of weeks of budget subcommittee. And their comments are included in this presentation before you. And of course, today we're, pre we're presenting this plan for you to get direction and guidance from the Board of Supervisors on these expenditures. Our next steps, we are looking to the Treasury Department. We're getting this funding direct from Treasury. Um, after the bill was passed, there's a lot of questions and comments that are going to be coalesced into the Treasury guidance. So we're looking to that. We also want to, throughout this uh, 19.3 million plan, we're looking to leverage other grants and funding. There are other monies in this, uh, in this uh, total plan. Uh, so absolutely wanting to make sure we're not uh, spending money where we don't have to. And we will be bringing items back to the board for approval as needed. So looking at the background, uh, the American Rescue Plan was signed by President Biden on March 11th. That included $1.9 trillion of total relief funding, $350 billion to state and local. Uh, that included 65.1 billion to counties and 65.1 to cities. You can see there are the allocations to the state, 26 billion, 19.3 that we're talking about today to the county, and then some uh, shares to Grass Valley, Truckee, and Nevada City. Eligible uses for these local funds are to respond to or mitigate to the COVID emergency or its economic impacts, to cover costs as a result of the emergency, and to replace revenue that was lost, delayed, or decreased uh, due to the emergency. And again, some of the details about how uh, these eligible uses will be forthcoming, but we do believe everything presented you today is an eligible expense. The funding allocation, uh, preliminarily, the 19.3 breaks down into 70% for COVID-related county costs and county revenue losses. That's about $13.5 million. And then 30% to community and economic resiliency. Caleb and his team will be talking about that in a few minutes. That's about 5.8 million. They're expected to be two equal disbursements, one uh, by June 1st, 2021, 9.67 million, and the other 9.67 about a year later, June 1st, 2022. And then funds must be spent by December 31st, 2024. A uh, slightly further breakdown of that 19.3 percentage wise. So county cost recovery, 9.7 million or 50%. I'll touch on a couple of those uh, spending details. County revenue loss, $3.9 million or 20%. And then again, community and economic resiliency, 5.8 million or 30%. So looking at the county cost recovery, these funds are very critical to the county. Uh, the county has mobilized and has very large expenditures and some revenue losses that I'll talk about. But first of all, the public health department, um, major impacts on public health department and all of their staff as far as vaccinations, immunizations, um, as far as testing and rental of vaccine sites, for example, there's significant costs related to that. But also, uh, for example, our public health officer, Dr. Kellerman, other public health staff, as well as a team of temporary staff that has been required to continue operations in the public health department. 
funds will go toward those purposes. Uh, other county departments, as mentioned, this has been widespread throughout the county departments in terms of mobilization, OES, uh, or even our CEO's office and other departments. So the staffing related to our mobilization and response to COVID uh, will will fit, will be supported by some of these dollars, as well as just maintaining the operations as far as equipment and some of the public health measures, such as masks and such. Uh, will uh, some of those expenses will be covered. Infrastructure investment and support and operations. Uh, this has been really critical for our uh, teleworking, for example. IS has really maintained uh, their system network infrastructure so that we can act, uh, we can uh, be efficient in our teleworking. Uh, there's also funds going toward roads, some roads improvements, and also uh, some public safety, uh, such as our communication systems that is in dire need of replacement. Uh, some of the funds will be leveraged uh, other dollars in that area. And then support of mental health, nutrition, housing, and homelessness. Uh, these are some key board objectives, but as they intersect with the emergency response, uh, certainly the uh, behavioral health and mental health has had a big effort out in the community for the homeless outreach. For example, we have the crisis mobilization team. Um, we've had non-congregate, uh, for example, the hotel rooms that we provided for uh, some some homeless folks uh, for non-congregate shelters. Uh, those monies will go toward those purposes. And again, we're monitoring these funding sources to make sure that we're leveraging out of that 1.9 trillion, making sure that we're leveraging, not duplicating out of this uh, $19.3 million. So we're being very effective in how we spend this money. Uh, the last piece of the county uh, expenditure categories are revenue loss, about 3.9 million of the 19.3 would go toward these purposes. We have waived environmental health fees uh, we have also waived some code compliance fees and penalties, and we have significant lost gas tax revenue compared to budget uh, that will bolster our roads uh, division. Federal marshal in the jail, a key revenue source for the sheriff's office, has been diminished due to the public safety aspects of operating the jail. And there's been significant HHSA revenue lost as they've mobilized their team uh, and focused on COVID. They've really had some gaps in uh, other revenues. And with that, I'm going to pass this on to uh, Caleb and his team. Thank you. All right. So good afternoon, Chair Miller and board members. I know we're trying to deal with some background noise. So if folks aren't presenting, if they could go on mute, that might help. Thank you. So yes, um, as mentioned, I am joined here today very proudly by Steve Frisch. He's the president of the, C of the Sierra Business Council, who's the county's partner in economic development. And we worked very closely um, as a team to develop these recommendations for you today. So as you know, the intent of the American Rescue Plan is to help our nation recover from this pandemic and stimulate the economy to speed up recovery. So I believe we all are really appreciate the board's, you know, entertainment of allocating 30% of, of the county's ARPA funds for community and economic resiliency. I don't believe there's another North State County reinvesting such a large percentage into the local economy. As Martin noted, we are looking for your feedback and direction today. Each of the five proposed grants and loan programs that we're about to describe will be brought back to you for review and approval before any funds are dispersed and to ensure they are consistent with U.S. Department of Treasury guidelines. Unlike the CARES Act monies, the coronavirus relief fund monies that we had last fall that had to be used months after we received them, we have three years to make sure that every dollar is wisely invested, leverages other funds, and importantly, is not expended in places where there may be other funds coming from the state or federal government. So as Martin noted, we have until 2024 to use this money and help our economy recover. So for example, some of you have heard there's a restaurant revitalization fund we're expecting to learn about any day now, hopefully within the next week or so, that we believe is intended to really help our restaurant sector recover. We wouldn't want to be putting some of these dollars into that effort only to find that they would have been eligible for this fund. And I think there'll be many instances like that. So we'll 
really be studying this as we go out there. The next couple slides that I'm gonna show you basically take the 5.8 million to 30% and put it into three pots. Of course, the board can move these allotments however you wish. And once we have your direction, county staff will bring back each program with details about the criteria and application process for your board's approval before any funds are expended. So looking at the slide, and I hope you can see it's community and economic resiliency slide. We know there's still a great need for small business and nonprofit sector relief. So we're recommending that the board allocate up to two and a half million for these purposes. The first program we wanna to describe to you in this upper box, Community Benefit Grants Program. The intent here is to support community serving institutions and organizations with macro grants. These are organizations that have struggled over the last year as, as so many sectors have family resource centers, agencies that are working with children and young people, community centers, senior centers, senior programs, cultural centers, arts organizations. There's many facilities and um, institutions that really rely for their revenue on doing events. And of course, those events have been canceled in the past year. So we see this as a program that could really bring some energy back into places where they might need it, get restarted, get back to where they were before the pandemic hit. We're also asking you to consider a small business resilience fund. This would be a revolving loan fund that would be administered by the Sierra Business Council. We're talking about seeding this loan fund with $250,000 and Steve will describe how the loan fund will work shortly as this would be a program administered by the Sierra Business Council. Also in here is another allocation um, to the Nevada County Relief Fund. Since your very first challenge grant, what, 13 months ago, this uh, the Nevada County Relief Fund has raised and expended now about $1.3 million. And we wanna continue doing that to support small businesses with micro grants up to $5,000. We would continue to work with our volunteer community advisory committee and the program would be administered by the staff at the Sierra Business Council have been doing a great job with that. So let me go to the next slide. All right. So in this slide, we're talking about allocating up to two and a half million for infrastructure improvements for economic development. We, we see this, these as looking at projects that align with board priorities and to the earlier point, not necessarily spending all the money on one project, but using um, really targeted um, amounts of this fund as match or helping with getting a project shovel ready. This could be everything from more rural broadband, for example, another round of the last mile grants like you supported earlier today. Housing development, we know how long and how hard it is to get uh, affordable housing projects off the ground and how many some of those early steps can make a difference. Wildfire protection, again, there's often matching funds or um, environmental studies that need to be done. Water and sewer hookups are a vital part of, you know, retail and commercial sectors. There's so many ways I think we think that um, the board could help target, really target funds that could uh, jumpstart the economy and support that work. Let me go to the next slide. So in this slide, we were showing a range, uh, 800,000 to a million for visitor safety. I think we are, we've all seen, especially in the past year, the intensity of visitor, visitor impacts at our river crossings and major trailheads from one end of the county to the other. These funds, we're calling it a Nevada County Outdoor Recreation and Visitor Safety Funds, could do a lot to mitigate all of those impacts. For example, um, investing in restrooms, parking lots. There's a number of things on this slide, parking enforcement, safety patrols, call boxes, public education, planning and permitting, conservation. But the idea is behind this is a recognition that we have a public safety issue here. Um, we're clear about that, but there's a clear economic development nexus as well, because not only is does our community you know, live here and enjoy these amenities, but our visitors come for these amenities as well. And um, so there's a ripple impact here. 
So what I'd like to do now is turn it back to Steve or turn it over to Steve Frisch to really, you know, put this in a larger context. How will this $5.8 million, how would moving forward with these efforts contribute to the overall economic recovery and help build that long-term resiliency that is that is so needed? And, and then we can come back. I'll talk about next steps, which is partly on this slide, but also a summary of what I just discussed. And then we, of course, welcome your questions. Steve? Great. Thanks, Caleb. Um, and good afternoon, and thanks to Board Chair Miller and members of the Board of Supervisors for this opportunity to address the issue today. And special thanks to Caleb and Allison Lehman for the opportunity to work together with the county in our role as the county's economic development services contractor in thinking through how these American Recovery Plan funds could be deployed to achieve maximum benefit. Um, we conferred with them closely on kind of the creation or the, the ideation of the community and economic resiliency portion of this proposal. And we really focused in on three key objectives. Number one, speed economic recovery across the county. Um, we know this has been a tough recession and it will be you know, a while before we pull out of it. How can we speed the recovery and get the maximum number of people back to work as quickly as possible? Number two, build long-term opportunity for economic resiliency based on the board's already approved goals. So we really looked closely at what the board has already made a commitment to around certain areas like small business help and, and um, economic development strategies and how could these funds create leverage around those already board approved goals. And then number three, this concept of creating maximum opportunity for leverage with other state and federal funds, both from the American Rescue Plan and from a potential future federal infrastructure bill and other state and federal funds that have been developing around many of the needs that Caleb, Caleb previously identified. So Sierra Business Council would be focused on assisting the county in thinking through development of funds in all of the areas that Caleb highlighted through our existing contract with the county. That would continue, that would mean continuing in our role as an administrator for the Nevada County Relief Fund, which has been a real success story, I think, in, in the effort on, on the part of the county. Conferring on the Community Benefits Grants Program and then looking at um, how to administer the Nevada County Economic Recovery Funds in order to match them with infrastructure funding coming from entities like the Economic Development Administration, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, state housing funds available through HCD and the Strategic Growth Council, broadband funds available through the California Advanced Services Fund and the State, state Treasurer's Office and other location. So really looking at how can we create maximum leverage with those economic recovery funds. There is a new program proposed in here, which is the Nevada County Resilience Fund. This is essentially a micro lending fund. These are very common across the state. There's actually already a statewide um, micro lending association called Cameo. Um, and these micro lending vehicles have a tendency to be short-term, low-cost capital to businesses. Um, usually there are amounts that are, um, that are not, um, not available through a standard commercial loan product or a bank, or the amounts are so low that banks are really not that interested in, in capitalizing them. So generally they're about $25,000 maximum loan amount for a five-year term. Um, the first six months of interest is deferred. There's a 2% interest rate thereafter. And this is for needs like small business inventory to restart a business, equipment, new technology, putting a business online in order to expand their market or expanding products and services. Um, the, 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 the businesses are then also available for technical assistance. They're automatically intaken as a client of the Small Business Development Center. So they are eligible for all of the technical assistance on business help that the Small Business Development Center provides. And they're kind of coached through the entire process. So 
not only are they eligible for capital, but they're eligible for long-term um, coaching. And then the loans are overseen by a local loan committee. This piggybacks on a similar micro lending platform that we already have in place at Sierra Business Council for the Lake Tahoe Basin and the North Lake Tahoe Truckee area. So it's basically an online lending platform. Um, and it's a pretty streamlined process. Basically, we can intake a client and get money in their pocket generally in less than three weeks, which is a, a pretty good record. And then um, the loan maintains a 20% loan loss reserve in order to hedge against potential future losses. Although, to be honest, we've done more than 50 loans through this program so far, and so far we've had no losses. And funding from this fund, the uh, Nevada County Resilience Fund, would be available to all Nevada County businesses. And then the other thing that we would be working with the county on is the deployment of the Nevada County Out Outdoor Recreation and Visitor Safety Funds. The recreation economy is already identified as one of the five key objectives in the county's comprehensive economic development strategy. So this would really focus on improving visitor and resident safety as part of the recreation economy. We would look at projects like Caleb described around traffic safety, sanitation, parking management, public outreach and education, reducing recreational conflicts and wildfire risk mitigation. With the increased visitorship, we're seeing a lot of friction around these issues. And I think the idea is that we would update the county economic or the comprehensive economic development strategy to include a more concerted focus on recreation-based economic development in the future. And here we would be seeking to leverage funds from the Federal Land and Water Conservation Fund, the Great Outdoor, the Great American Outdoor Act public agency budgets that are increasing around the U.S. Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management because of the wildfire funding fix that was put in place two years ago, and then state funding available through general fund budgets and bond measures. So a reminder, our objective, speed economic recovery, kickstart the economy, and, um, and it's, it's good that we have a little bit of time to do that build long-term opportunity and economic resilience based on the board's approved goals, create maximum opportunity for leveraging other state and federal funds, and improve the long-term health of the county's economy. Thanks for your time and consideration, and I'd like to hand it back to Caleb to close and remain available for questions. Thank you very much. One, one question, uh, Steve, this is Dan. Uh, these are processes, these are applications, these are things that you've already been doing and we're just folding something else into it. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, I would say that's accurate. Some, some of these programs will take a little bit more administration, uh -huh. but, um, but really I think the, the new thing about this is a renewed focus on leverage. How yeah. can we use the county's funds to multiply the impact by accessing state and federal funds as part of these processes? Well, I think we saw that this morning on the broadband where we used uh, 500,000 for 4 million in projects. <laughs> and I, I think that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a, sensible, a sensible way to do it if we can do it. Yep. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Really appreciate that. And, and Supervisor Miller, you can see where we're getting a getting the word of the day is leverage. <laughs> so I, I wanna talk a little bit about next steps. Um, looking on the chart in front of you, the right-hand column. So for the Community Benefit Grants Program, we're imagining putting together a program criteria and application process, not unlike the, C the Coronavirus Relief Fund macro grant program that we did last fall, where we would you know, solicit applications, put together a committee of community members and staff to review and score them, and then bring a recommendation back to the board. And we certainly think we can bring at least the initial guidelines and process to you, you know, probably as soon as June. On the Resilience Fund, this is a, you know, a loan program administered by the SEER Business Council. So we would work with them to develop the loan agreement documents and bring that back to you as well. The Nevada County Relief Fund, I think we can move a little bit faster just because we already have MOUs in place that would be easily updated. 
of course, we can make changes to the program criteria as you like, but we're ready to move forward and reconvene our, our, our community group to basically initiate what, what would be a fifth round. On the Nevada County Economic Recovery Fund, this is slightly different because we're imagining that we would manage it in some ways like your Economic Development Infrastructure Assignment Fund as opposed to a grant program. We could also, you know, perhaps have some sort of combination hybrid, but this would be really where we see projects where some county seed money could really make a difference or county money at a critical point could make a difference. And to, to get projects, you know, ready, shovel ready, because we know that shovel readiness is probably going to be the most important criteria for leveraging money coming down in future federal legislation. In the Nevada County Outdoor Recreation and Visitor Safety Funds package, this would definitely be a hybrid. Again, we could manage it like the Economic Development Infrastructure Assignment, bringing certain requests for your approval, but I think we could also develop program criteria and a grant application process in as well. So lots of flexibility here. We definitely want to be smart. Every conversation and conference call that we've been on with White House staff, NACO staff, CSAC, everyone is impressed upon us. You know, these are really almost without precedent in, in our lifetimes that there's been a big federal allocation of funds directly to counties that could be used strategically. And given that so much other investment is coming from state and federal sources to the community to really respond to the impacts of this pandemic, an opportunity to use this pot of money uh, with you know, to get it out where we can help people, but to keep the discretion um, that allowed, you know, allow us to meet the board objectives. So with that, Steve and I and Martin are all available to take your questions. Okay, to the, uh, to the board. Um, let's see, party. Let's start off with you have questions for Steve or Caleb. I, I do have just a couple of questions, just clarifying questions before the uh, board discussion, but on the economic recovery funds and the outdoor recreation funding, I think Caleb, what you're asking, or essentially some of the guidance you're looking for is, do we want this to be grant application driven or more discretionary on the part of the board? Am I correct in that, in my summary of that? Yes, Supervisor. I think that we can, you know, in the case of the Nevada County Outdoor Recreation and Visitor Safety, we're imagining a hybrid or we're recommending a hybrid to you. Because we know that there are many great user groups out there who, who know exactly what's needed and could really propose some great projects that would make a difference. And we have so many partners in those fields. But I also think the county is, has, has an opportunity to, to, use its own discretion to move projects that it has in the pipeline. And, and I can't help but point out the parking lot uh, at Grace, off, um, off Gracie Road near Banner, in which the <clears throat> Contractors Association and Bear Yuba Land Trust and Hanson Brothers and the county and probably others came together and with really leveraged public-private partnership in-kind services and completely rebuilt a trailhead that is heavily used and turned it into a, a beautiful, you know, trailhead amenity that was desperately needed. And there are so many other places like that that you, as board members, and 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 as you know, we know where those impacts are. So I think having that discretion, having that mix, I think could serve us well. Okay. So, in the economic recovery front, the the economic recovery. Fund portion also recommended from a staff approach at a hybrid type of model? I, I mean, we're looking for your direction today. Um, we're putting forward that it, we would keep it more like the economic, not as a hybrid, but as okay. projects that are developed by staff with board approval. Steve, okay. do you want to weigh in on any of that or Martin? Well, the only thing I would add on the um, on the recreation and safety funding is that there's really two needs that we're seeking to address here. There's a short term need from dramatic increase in visitorship and the friction that is causing public safety problems. But there's also a longer term need for 
improved infrastructure investments in things like parking and sanitation and access and other things. So we think this hybrid model where there's a grant process for short-term needs, but then there's some strategic thinking around lining up for being able to qualify for investments from state and federal programs to solve some of these infrastructure problems is kind of a smart way to go. Okay, understood. And I, I just had one more quick question. On the infrastructure versus visitor safety portion, if would this would it be the discretion of staff and the board collectively to define because obviously there's larger amounts of funding in the infrastructure portion and some of the projects even that Steve and Caleb have pointed out kind of cross boundaries between infrastructure and recreation um, like the the Bear River I think uh, staff and I were talking about the Bear River uh, bridge crossing and some of the leverage opportunities there but it kind of would benefit recreation so making that delineation would that be handled uh, at the staff level board level combination thereof looks like Martin's coming on Thank you very much. Yeah, I can come on and answer that question. Martin Polt, your CFO here. Uh, definitely, we would be in this whole process, uh, Supervisor Bullock, we would be coming back to the board with proposals. There's, you know, the Treasury guidance is changing. So this in front of you is definitely preliminary. And as you said, as projects develop and the board, if the board wishes, you know, six months from now, nine months from now, we would be coming back to you with status of these projects you could definitely you know if you saw some other priority these are not fixed um, as they are but definitely your guidance on just overall these numbers is very helpful but we would be coming back to you with possible uh, opportunity to change later on okay thank you yeah all my questions uh, have been answered thank you chair miller okay yeah that's just you know that that I'm looking at that 2.5 million. If I have my my glasses aren't on, uh, as 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 leverage money, that that can be used. And gosh, I I like that word that you invented there, Caleb. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, if we can if we can use uh, 500,000 to leverage a project that's worth 17 million, uh, you know, we 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 have we have the availability. Heidi. Do you have something? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you for this really thoughtful uh, presentation. It looks like you guys have put some really good work in this. And I like that you're starting with what the programs we already have and looking to make them more robust. I have a series of questions. They might be pretty quick. They might be questions or, or suggestions. And they kind of go by the slide. So the first one is all this huge chunk of money that we're looking at dividing up. I didn't see anything about schools and I'm wondering if they're getting I have I've been following the ARPA, but I did not pay attention to this. Are schools getting their own chunk of money out of this? Do we know? Yes, there. Yes, there is a chunk of money for schools out of that 1.9 trillion. Okay, uh, certainly. Yes. So we don't need to we want to may want to partner with them on stuff, but we don't need to worry about getting money to them. They've got their own pot. Okay. Um, uh, the gas tax, you mentioned that we are lose lost a lot of money with the gas tax. You also, it sounds like you're aware, I mean, the transportation and infrastructure bill is coming down. So you are looking at stuff that maybe we're looking at funding now, but maybe we pull it when another set of funding comes down and we figure out where to put that somewhere else. Is that, that's going to be a whole process too, right? Am I clear Thank you for that. Thanks for that comment, Supervisor Hall. I mean, as with this 1.9 trillion, I mean, it's very complicated, very comprehensive, and no doubt that transportation bill would be similar. Uh, and uh, I know Steve Frisch, uh, you know, our partners who are collectively keeping eyes on these dollars, that is absolutely one of our tenants of this one, not only this 19.3 million, but just the leveraging and the matching throughout our community. We're really trying to keep an eye on for the 1.9 trillion, but yes, we definitely don't want to spend money where there's other funding available. Yeah, it sounds like you guys have thought about that. Um, on the community relief grants program, there were, I did not hear you talk about youth. So the community centers, senior centers, there was a youth center. I'm hoping that you will consider that also and, and that group. Yeah, the, the, those were just meant to be suggestions. Okay. Really, any, any type of 
you know, we're looking first at those facilities that serve the community and definitely youth, youth centers would be eligible community centers, but also programs that um, serve these populations as well. Right. Okay. And then arts, the arts. So I know that we're looking at the arts institutions, but I know that the Nevada County Arts Council wanted to be considered as a group to um, to provide funding to to maybe distribute to individual artists who don't belong to these institutions. So are we taking that the arts community into consideration as this kind of odd? They don't belong in business necessarily. They aren't an institution. Can we make sure we're looking at them? Absolutely, and we have spoken with um, you know Eliza Tudor from the from the Arts Council and recognize that there are both cultural institutions like the cultural you know, cultural centers and Center for the Arts and other venues that um, would fall under the category, but there are also programs uh, that that are art related programs as well. And there's also art entrepreneur, you know, people who are in the creative industry and, you know, for the point of, of the Nevada County Relief Fund, we've treated, you know, jewelers and potters and many artists, gallery owners as right. businesses, which is, which is really what they are. They're business people too. So we, we definitely see, um, that program, as well as the Nevada County Relief Fund and the Resilience Fund loan program, all would be open and eligible for the creative creative sector. Okay. Um, on the community and economic resiliency or infrastructure, I want to suggest that we look at electric charging stations. I have no idea how those are funded and identified, but I know that I believe we have some here for the county. But I've gotten a steady stream of emails over the years from people asking for us to install those stations, and that should certainly align with many of the state's goals um, as well. Is that a possibility? I would say that it is, and certainly there is going to be quite a bit of investment um, and grant programs that the county could go after. But Steve, I know, has worked on these issues around um, energy resiliency. Perhaps, Steve, you could add to that. Yeah, there are two programs moving right now at the state level also on both wider distribution of electric vehicles through rebate programs, um, specifically targeted to medium and low income households and to electric vehicle charging. So there's a $1.3 billion budget allocation in this year's budget for ramping up state support for electric vehicle charging systems. So generally what's necessary for that is to have an EV charging plan in place. So one of the things that, you know, the county might want to look at in the future, not necessarily from this fund, but perhaps from state grant funding, is doing such an EV charging plan so that they can access those state and probably federal funds in the infrastructure bill for, um, for expanded EV charging stations. Awesome. We're going to need a grand matrix for all of this. Yeah. Okay, that's good to hear. I just have a couple more. Um, on the on the um, recreation and trails, I just wanted to note trash and green waste is another place we might want to invest. Um, and then I'm thinking about, of course, the South Yuba River cohort, where we can put some funds, and obviously these are all priorities for us on this list and that cohort. We could use some of our county funds but we could be working with our state parks that's part of that group and BLM that's part of that group to make sure they're also identifying funds they could bring in. So that might be a separate process. I just wanna highlight that because I think what, if we get on that early, we could come up with our own pot of funds that's you know state, federal and county to get at all of these issues. Um, I, I'm assuming they're getting funding too. Um, and then I just think that I want to say for the last comment, one thing I just want us to be mindful of, and I'm sure you are, is that the studies have shown that the COVID affected our underserved and racial minority populations um, in a bigger way than others. And so I would like us to be mindful of that and make sure that we're looking at targeting some of these programs um, to that community as well. Absolutely, uh, Supervisor Hall. And and again, the feedback that we're getting from you today and over the next days, will, weeks will really help inform the 
the, the program description, the criteria that we put out there. And so we, we can anticipate, you know, we'll bring that to you before we go out on the street and solicit applications. We want to make sure that these are programs that reflect our values and our goals. And I do want to really reiterate what Steve said, because he gave such a good example to your question about the EV char electric vehicle charging. You could spend millions on actually building the charging stations, but maybe you spend a couple, you know, 10, couple tens of thousands of dollars on a plan that then makes you eligible to write those grants and get those funds. So I think we can see this on the recreation side where, you know, we have already talked about working together in committee to develop a prioritization, to work with partners, to really identify the most important projects and those projects will really having that information, doing that sort of planning is going to prepare us to then know where to spend the money and what we need money for. Do we need money for a plan? Do we need money for a match? But that sort of preliminary planning and prioritization exercises in many ways is what comes next. Okay, yeah, so thank you again. I saw you taking notes, I appreciate that. Um, and I know we'll have more opportunities to talk about this and I may have Quest, more questions at the end, but Chair, that's all for now. Thank you. Okay, Sue. Oh, thanks, Dan. I, I don't really have any questions. This was a great experience being on this budget subcommittee as we look these uh, issues over and um, I'm actually really enjoying uh, my colleagues' responses to some of the ideas. So yeah, no, this was good. Thank you. Ed? Well, you know, whenever one of these big funding projects come up at the federal or state level, there's always the question of pork that's put into it. Uh, everybody has their favorite projects that they want to get taken care of. And I think we have to be very careful that we don't do the very same thing here. This is about getting our community back from COVID. So there are certain projects that work really well for us in the county and it's really great, but I think we need to focus, first of all, first of all, that 70% that's going to the county. You know, I think we need to be very, very clear that we really do have those expenses because of the loss. Uh, you know, we've already gone through one of these big projects where it already took another 70%. So you want to be very, very clear that yes, public health does need this much or, uh, they are specific losses to COVID. And then the other areas is where I think we really should be focusing the community resiliency, um, the, the smaller grants, the business grants. You know, so many of those businesses out there, suddenly they get a $5,000 check. That's wonderful. But uh, look at one that's been shut down this entire year. That $5,000 doesn't do much at all. We need to make sure those businesses are we're as doing as much as we possibly can for those types of businesses. This is wonderful. This is wonderful to have this money coming down, but we want to be sure that it's spent in the, uh, the proper places and where we have three years to uh, spend this money. I think we can sit back a little bit on some of it and wait to see really what are the needs, because I don't think we really know all the impacts from COVID. So. I would just say be careful, but take care of our businesses as much as we can. The resiliency grants, the uh, the relief fund, I think that's where we need to focus our immediate interest. Thank you, Chair Miller. And you know, Ed, that was a conversation that Sue and I had with, uh, with staff as far as the small business and that amount of money. And uh, there's, a, there's the opportunity for us to, to move monies around uh, and shift money uh, to areas that would need it most. And I agree with you as far as the small business, you know, the 250,000 is nice, but it doesn't seem quite adequate to address the, the, the big financial hits that businesses did take. Now, what's gonna be nice, and Caleb mentioned it, is hopefully this next week we find out, you know, about that fund to help the restaurants that have been closed down for this entire time to get them back up and running and get them reimbursed for those lost revenues, and that's that's going to be huge. And I hope that that uh, Steve and Sierra Business Council is going to be involved in that when that does happen, because 
they're going to they're going to need some some prof professional help. And uh, the way SBC has been working uh, lately for us, um, there's probably no better organization to help restaurants uh, navigate you know those issues. So ironically, Thanks, if I I'm might sorry, respond Steve. to that for just a second, Supervisor Miller. Ironically, as we were speaking, the restaurant um, relief package came out. Um, so just in the last hour, it opens May 3rd. So we already have staff reviewing the guidelines for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, and I do think, I think that issue of what do businesses really need to get back online is a really important issue. And yeah. I... I agree with you, Supervisor Schofield. We don't really know that for sure yet. And holding back a little bit and figuring out what are the business needs in order, particularly for some of these businesses that were, were mostly shut down during the pandemic, what are their needs to get back online is really important. That's an area where the, the, um, the resilience fund might be able to scale. So for example, later on down the line, should we want to do larger loans through that fund, we could. Um, and what we've seen so far for businesses that have been using it is that it has not been uncommon for these to be pretty short-term loans. Like, so for example, we've had several people borrow enough money for inventory to reopen their doors. And then, you know, because the, their creditors won't give them the 90 days they need at this point, but the, the relief fund can, right? And then pay back as the inventory is sold. So, so I think that idea of maintaining flexibility to see what the business community really needs six months from now is really important, you know. And then um, Heidi, I might note that a third of the initial loan recipients from the Resilience Fund in the North Lake Tahoe Truckee area were to minority-owned um, and women-owned businesses in the region largely because they did not have that relationship with their banking institutions to do um, to do business loans. So uh, particularly the minority owned businesses. So um, they were amongst the first people through the door on the on the resilience fund when we set it up six months ago or nine months ago. That's a great way to close that gap. That's great. Yeah. Party, your hand is up. Uh, thank you, Chair Miller. I had a Quick question. Um, I think it's for staff and possibly for um, Martin. The f approximately 15 million that's set aside for cost recovery, co cost recovery and revenue replacement. As the we, as we close this portion of the pandemic and we start reopening and we see additional needs surface in mental, behavioral health, public health. Do we have some flexibility in moving those pots of money around to address things like suicide prevention? homelessness, problems related to incarceration, do we have enough flexibility or some piece of that money left over to really be nimble and address some of these things that we're talking about? I appreciate that comment, uh, Supervisor Bullock. This is Martin Polt, your Chief Fiscal Officer. Um, absolutely, our intent here today was to provide you a preliminary plan, get your feed and feedback and guidance, which really appreciate your comments so far. And to come back to you as, you know, as many as Ed has mentioned and you're mentioning now, you know, we're taking our time with this. We do want to be able to pivot and meet other needs flexibly, uh, not only in the county uh, offices and departments, as you're mentioning, but in the community. Uh, so a couple things I just want to assure you, there is funding for suicide prevention separate from this. There's uh, significant funding for behavioral health, both behavioral health clinics and local behavioral health offices in that 1.9 trillion outside of this state and local funding. There's also block grants for um, alcohol and drug treatment. And there's also some other public health support. So this is again where, you know, as Supervisor Hall has mentioned, we're definitely wanting to keep our eyes on those balls. But you're right, as as those programs develop and funding comes through for those programs, we see what comes into the county. I believe, yes, we'd be able to pivot uh, to really keep keep track of the need, uh, reassess that, and come back to the board uh, later in probably 2021-22 20, 
uh, with some additional guidance for some additional guidance. Okay. The, my only other quick question is the uh, the time frame on the first the funding of the first allocation I saw was split into halves on 21 and 22. Will will we will the board expect to see um, a, a re revision or finalization of this plan sometime in June or Ju before the budget, I guess, or near the budget time period? Thank you, Supervisor Bullock. Again, Martin Polt here. Uh, we don't expect necessarily to come with a like a comprehensive budget amendment. So what we would do is you likely will see budget amendments, but there'll be items that come to the board that are, you know, we've solidified either a program such as Caleb and, and Steve have mentioned in the community and economic resiliency or something for the county and infrastructure project or something. We'll bring budget items to you as they develop and as they are mature enough to bring to the board. That would That's our idea at this point. Okay, so I was just getting to Supervisor Hall's question about the grand schematic of trying to just kind of track things over time. And um, I would, is one board member support at least some exhibit like that to keep us uh, focused on the pieces that change over time. One initiative at a time is to totally understand that's great and I support that. I just, I wouldn't mind an exhibit that tracks it at a high level. Yeah, typically, and typically you'll see staff pre, you know, presenting something like or developing something like that so we can uh, follow it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Julie, uh, do we have any public comment on this? Um, Chair Miller, we do have someone waiting on the phone to provide a comments, and I have a number of emails and letters if you want me to read those into the record. Okay, let's go to the, the person on hold. Great, thanks, Dan. Matthew Coulter. In all these discussions, has any veterans groups come up? Uh, I guess not. Yeah, good, you know, good question. I think the veterans groups would would have been in the community benefit grants program, uh, Martin. I don't, I, I don't recall seeing it, but I, but I do. I, I take that back. I do see some, have seen something where veterans groups have been involved or yep. uh, considered. Yeah, if I may, uh, Please, and thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Coulter, for that because I, you did connect us with, uh, with several military groups, or and one did reach out to, reach out to me, and definitely their projects. Would be welcome as applications for sure. You know there are many veteran service organizations that um, that absolutely are providing a needed community service and would be eligible to apply for the community benefit grants program. So thank you for asking. Yeah, th yeah thanks, thanks for Pat, setting that up after our conversation. And um, yeah, I'm specifically thinking of the Veterans Honor Guard that does the funerals, and they haven't had a van for several years. So something that could help them with that would be awesome. Thanks a lot. Steve, did you have something to add on that? Just wanted to note that veteran owned businesses get preferential treatment in our resilience yeah. fund revolving loan program as well. Okay, great. That's nice to know. Matthew, did you get that? Yes, I did. Thank you, Dan. Okay, great. Julie, any, any other public comment? Only if you want me to read some letters into the record. Otherwise, I believe that's all the live comments we have. Are they pretty much uh, along the same lines? Um, they are very much in support of funding for the arts and for small businesses. And all the board members have seen these emails. They are uploaded for the public into the um, agenda item. And um, it's, it's your call. I'm happy to read them if you'd like, or if there's not time for that, that's now, if they've, if they've, been, decision. if they've been uploaded and we have them uh, and they're in public record, we're good. Okay, thank you, Chair Miller. Okay, um, back to board questions, uh, direction. Uh, Heidi, you good? Excited to see this move forward. Personal point of personal privilege, thanks the Democrats for voting for this. They're the only ones who did. So here we go. Sue? No, just thanks for the whole team that worked on this. Caleb, everyone, and Martin. I, I mean, it was it's a it's a joint effort of staff to put this all together. And um, I do like the fact that it's manageable to 
uh, move around. I think that's going to be important as we go through any type of rebuilding in this community. So um, I just want to thank everybody for the work they put into this. Ed? Uh, you know, I want to give a special thanks to Caleb and uh, Martin also. I know the work that goes into this, but I want to give a special thanks to Steve and the Sierra Business Council. You know, Steve, we're involved with a number of pro uh, projects and uh, from everything I've heard, it's been very, very positive. And so thank you so much for your uh, dedication to our county and the expertise that you bring. And I really liked what I heard coming from you and from Martin. And this discussion, I think we're all pretty much on the same page. Thank you, Jerry. Hardy. Oh, thank you, Chair Miller. I, I want to echo the comments of my colleagues. Uh, and I'd like to thank staff for taking the time to parse it out and really answer all the questions it, in this meeting and also offline. Um, there's a lot of details been developed to answer the questions. I appreciate that. And um, Steve, it's so it's so nice to work with you and near you. I walk down the hall from my office into your office and I ask a couple questions and then I walk back and it's very effective. And I just I'm, I'm really excited to see the work you're doing uh, for the entire county, West County, East County, everybody. So great from a high level um, policy perspective. You know, I really like being that we're remaining steadfast in the priorities that the Board of Supervisors have created and remaining uh, linear in our thought process as we attack and tackle these problems that face our whole community. But I also like the concept of, of uh, having some capacity and, and being able to be a little bit nimble. And so if fixing some of the issues that we face, particularly around the um, impacts from visitor impacts and maybe some of the fallout from COVID. So those are just my high level thoughts. And also um, because we do have this extra funding and we have an extra kind of um, pot of discussions we're gonna be having around it, Again, I would just like an, a high level exhibit to kind of track that across time to make it easier for us and also easier for our constituents to understand uh, where, where it's going and how we're using that money to solve solve problems and improve their um, quality of life. So and you know, once again, thank you. Job well done putting all this together. OK, so so Allison, uh, Caleb, uh, Steve, uh, Martin, do, do, you, do you have enough direction from the board on this? Yeah, Chair Miller, excellent conversation, and we really appreciate the thoughtful questions. And yes, we do have appropriate direction from the board. Okay, great. Uh, so Caleb, Steve, Martin, thank you. Uh, seems like our partnership seems to be growing better and better every day there, Steve. I want to give a super hat tip to my colleague and the brains of the operation, <laughs> Kristen York, who is on a well-deserved vacation um, this week. So um, if not for her absence, um, I would not have been, I probably would not have been here today, but it is a pleasure to be working with the county at this level. Thanks, Steve. And, and, you know, everything that the SPC does because, you know, that it is, it is a great partnership. It was certainly a good call on the Board of Supervisors to uh, get you involved in this. Okay, with the, and it's nice that we are such a, a nonpartisan outfit, and we don't politicize anything. So, <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, any uh, closing comments, Allison? You good? Yes, Chair. We're good. Okay. Uh, again, thanks to everyone. Um, that's our last. Oh, hey, do we want to do board comments? Announcements. No? Uh, okay. We're adjourned. You hit my Do what? You meant announcements, right? Yeah, that's what I. That's what I. All meant. right, we'll save them up for next time. Okay, good. Add them up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.